Hey guys and girls, how's it going? My name is Lewis and welcome to a updated mod spotlight on Britannia. Today we're going to be going through the brand new Alphamancy release, or the pink release as I like to call it, you'll soon understand why. And this adds loads of funky new stuff to the mod. Now if you want to go watch the original video which runs through everything prior to this release, you can do that by clicking on the link in the bottom left hand corner. And that will take you to that video where you can see everything that we're probably not going to go through today. Alrighty, so let's jump into a flat world and we'll check all this new cool stuff out. Alrighty, so first we're going to run through everything to do with the elven side of things. And then we'll look into the additional parts that have been added in this update. So before, when we opened this up, we did have areas here for Alphamancy in the uh, later versions. And what this did is this gave us some little clues, information and snippets about what's kind of upcoming. But now we have the portal to Alfheim. Yes, if we click on this, it's going to tell us about the elves, which we uh, didn't know about. And it's also going to give us information on how to create the portal that will link us between the two worlds. And to do this, we're going to need eight living wood. We're going to need three glimmering living wood. We're going to need one elven gateway core, two nature pylons, and a load of mana. <laughs> so let's make this, guys. So if we grab this, we grab these, these, these. And I think I'll probably use a uh, one of the creative mana pools for this, and we'll build this guy. So the Elven Gateway Core is fairly expensive, it requires some Terra Steel, which is kind of the uh, highest before this came out. And what we do is we're going to pop this down here, then we're going to build around it. So let's put down some Living Wood, like such. We're going to have it on the sides, like that. Then we're going to have some Glimmering Living Wood, there we go, and a little bit more like this. And then we'll do the same on the top. Cool. So there we go. That's one portal frame made. Now we need to power the portal. So the easiest way to remember this is just come out free and then go along free. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And the same here. One, two, three, one, two, three. Like that. And we place our nature pylons. Yes. Nature pylons, again, are also fairly expensive. To make nature pylons, we need essence of eternal life. And this is made with a never star, some terra steel, and a blaze powder. So not cheap. But now that we've got this, we can grab ourselves our wand of the forest. So let's just grab a wand of the forest from here. We'll, actually, no, we'll go with a, uh, a pink one, seeing as this is... Uh, you'll, you'll understand. <laughs> and we click on our elven gateway call like this. It's going to light up. And we're going to have this awesome effect of all of these particles going around, kind of spiraling around our nature pylons. And this is going to open up our uh, elven portal. Now, one thing to note with this is it uses up a fairly decent amount of mana when it opens up. And while it's open, it is going to drain a small amount of mana as well to keep the elven portal open. One thing it does note in the Lexica Britannia that it is more profitable or, or best to keep the portal open and keep feeding these mana pools mana than it is to turn it off and turn it back on again as the initial kind of cost of mana to open it is fairly expensive. So there we go. So now that we've got this open, we can't actually go through it. It's not a portal that can be ran through. This is a portal that we send items through. And to do this, the first thing you're going to want to go ahead and do is you're going to want to grab your Lexica Britannia. So we've got our Lexica Britannia. It looks all good. And if we chuck this into the pool like such, we're going to get our uh, Lexica Britannia back. And it looks kind of the same, doesn't it? But if you have a gander inside it now, we've got this awesome bit here from the Elven Guard. Yes, this explains that the elves are uh, very, very interested in the knowledge that you've gathered and the items in the world. And that they're quite happy to trade items between the two worlds. One thing to note, though, is if you push anything through that isn't tradable, they're just going to accept it as a gift. And you're not going to get it back. So don't throw anything in you don't mean to throw in because you're not going to get it back. If I throw a nature pylon in, probably not going to get anything back. <laughs> so the bits that we can trade with the elves are, firstly, the Lexica Britannia for the new Elven Lexica Britannia. We can trade Living Wood for Dream Wood. We can change two Mana Steel for one Elementium Ingot. We can change Mana Pearls for Pixie Dust and Mana Diamonds for Dragon Stones. Yes, but this isn't it. By sending it through, we've also traded knowledge. So they've taken some knowledge from our world, but they've also given us some knowledge from their world. And if we look in our Lexica Britannia and we go back to the main part here, we can start looking at things like mana manipulation. You'll know that they now have these little green areas, the elven mana spreader. And this goes the same for most of the parts that are uh, kind of linked to the elven knowledge side of things. So uh, generating flora or, or natural apparatus now as conjuring with mana 
scanner and spectral platforms. It's all pretty funky stuff, so let's go through some of these. The first one is going to be a mana spreader upgrade. So we have the elven mana spreader, which looks like such. And here I've put up a little kind of uh, a little a little bit just to show you the difference between the spreaders. So if we set it to nighttime like this oh, and we'll put it to uh, peaceful as well so we don't have many bad guys coming around and I grab my wand of the forest you remember from the past video that we talked about how far they can go before you start having the mana kind of diminishing from that point forward so this one here is from a regular mana spreader so the mana will come to here and from this point onwards we're going to start losing mana the second one is a regular one with a efficiency lens so that means that it goes a little bit further and the amount of mana we lose from this point is uh, is not as much as the regular one but then we have the dream yes the elven mana spreader and this one goes really far check this one out so it is a clear clear upgrade to the regular and the regular with the efficiency lens now that is pretty cool all right let's go back and check out some of the other funky things that we've got so as well as the spreaders we have a upgrade to our uh, to this guy we have an upgrade to the alchemy catalyst so if you remember the alchemy catalyst is used to throw items in and it kind of transmutes them into different items so redstone for glowstone and vice versa this guy the alchemy catalyst requires pixie dust and elementium ingots which obviously we get from uh trading with the uh through the elven portal and how this works is very much like the alchemy catalyst in which we can put items into it, but it's slightly different in the functionality of it. So if I grab some living wood and we just get a little way up here. Now this allows us to double items. So for instance, if I got some redstone, and obviously this is going to cost mana, so you're going to need mana to do this, and we throw it in there, we're going to be granted two redstone. How cool is that? And that goes for a few items. So we have redstone, glowstone, never quartz, coal, snow, neverack, soul sand, and gravel. And by throwing those in, they'll use up a portion of mana, and you'll get a double. So you'll get two of each one you throw in. How awesome is that? The next one is the spectral platform, and this guy is very cool. So much like the abstruse, the abstruse platform that was in before this update, the abstruse platform allows you to stand on top of the uh, of the blocks that you place down. But if you're not standing on top of them, you pass straight through them. Pretty cool, right? So again, we can just pass straight through it, and that goes the same for making some you know little funky little areas like this which is awesome, as you can also go ahead and you can change the appearance of these blocks. So if I grab some quartz and I click on them, they'll change to blocks of quartz like that. It's the same with these ones here. So a Struce platform is right there. So if I, if I go and I kneel down, I pass straight through it. Pretty funky stuff. But now we have a brand new variation of this, which is this guy, the spectral platform. And how the spectral platform works, if we grab it here, is basically the same type of concept, except anything can pass through it. So there is no standing on top of this guy. It will always cause the uh, pet player to pass through it. So there we go. You see just walking through it. If we try and jump on top of it, it doesn't do anything. We can't actually get on top of it. So it's completely, uh, it's basically completely passable. The same thing goes though that we can decorate the block so we can change them to be a different color, can change them to be quite a lot of things. So if you want yourself a awesome little hooded little hidden room behind a bookcase, you can do that. We can take our bookcase and we can change those as well. There we go. We can pass straight through them. How cool is that? Oh yes. So let's move on. Next thing is the armor type. So we now have the Elementium armor set. So that goes for all pieces of the armor. So we have the headset, we have the chest plate, we've got the leggings, and we've got the Elementium boots. And when these guys are placed on, let's just grab those once again. There we go. Yeah. So once we've got these guys on, firstly, we look very pink indeed. <laughs> and these guys have a couple of recommend uh, kind of traits which you'll know from some of the other armor types. So these ones, their durability is kind of roughly half of diamond. And what happens when they take damage is if you have any type of uh, mana item in your inventory. So a mana tablet or a mana mirror 
or you have one of the mana rings, it's going to take mana from that and it's going to neglect some of the damage. So overall, pretty funky stuff and it does look nice. But they do have a very special trait. And what these are is as they come from the elven world, and we do know elves and fairies and things like that are all very unique and entwined, if you take damage, these have a chance of spawning a pixie. And what that pixie does is it will dive bomb into the to the enemy that attacked you and do damage. How cool is that? Now, for every piece that you have, you have an increased chance of spawning a pixie. So let's grab ourselves a skeleton here and we'll turn this back to normal. And we place this guy down. He's going to start firing at me in a minute. Oh, if I put myself back into this. And every time he fires, there's a chance that a pixie's going to spawn and kamikaze into him. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Now, if you if you uh, go ahead and attack, then uh, it won't send a pixie out. You have to actually be attacked yourself. But these will go ahead and attack pretty much anything that attacks you. So that's pretty funky stuff, isn't it? Obviously, less parts you have, less of the chance you've got of spawning a pixie. But there we go. So that's all that good stuff there. So let's take those off for a second. And we'll go back into creative. The next one are the Elementium tools. These all have their certain traits as well. So the first one being the Elementium pickaxe. With this, it basically gets rid of any annoying little bits that you don't want when you're mining because you don't want your bags to fill up all the time so for instance cobblestone when we mine it let's go back like this what it's going to do is it'll mine it but it won't actually drop it so nothing like that's going to drop and your bags aren't going to get filled up the same with gravel all the mundane bits that you don't need oh geez we've got bad guys <laughs> bit of peaceful there we go yeah so any of the uh, annoying bits of gravel dirt and things that you don't want that goes ahead and just deletes them. Obviously, the cool bit is we still get the gravel from it, which is nice. But anything else, and it just goes. But all blocks will actually be mineable. So, yeah, there you go. It's a nice way of uh, doing your mining without having to have your bags and all of your inventory filled up with dirt and bits of cobblestone. Because no one likes that. Next one is the Elementium Shovel. And how this one works is... And it's this is, an, this is one thing that I think is very cool. Is have you ever had that moment where you've con you've been mining and you've got a massive load of gravel and it just never ends and you have to keep standing there digging one piece after one piece after one piece after one piece? Yes, that's always a thing. Well, this is the best guy for you. So how the Elementium shovel works is when you shovel gravel or sand or items like that, it will actually do the whole lot from above and below the block that you just mined. So if I mine this one here, it will take away everything above it. And if I do this one here it will take everything below it. And that's the same, so it would do the whole lot. So everything above, everything below, the same for this. So we can do it in the middle here, and it will get rid of all the sand, and it will get rid of all that sand. How cool is that? Yes, awesome stuff. Next one is the Elementium Axe. Now this guy is pretty cool because it doubles up as a weapon, but it also has a chance that when you land the finishing blow on certain mobs, you have a chance of decapitating them and taking their head. Yes, this goes for zombies, skeletons, creepers, and even players. So that guy that you don't like, you can have a go at him with your Elementium Axe and maybe grab yourself a trophy. Next one are the Elementium Shears, and these guys are pretty funky, so if we grab a load of sheep from in here and we go and spawn a load of sheep, there we go, and if we stand down and we charge up our bow as if we was winding up, or as if we was winding up a bow, and do this, it's going to go around and it's going to shear all the sheep for us, how cool, it does have a fairly decent range on it as well. So a nice way of uh, shearing all your sheep in bulk. So that's the Elementium Shears, yes. And obviously these will take the same trait that these items will uh, repair themselves from mana on the person. So if you have, once again, a mana tablet, ring, a uh, mirror, anything of the sort, you'll have that. And next up we have the Elementium Sword. This guy again is also very funky. How this works is very much like the armor. So if we spawn ourselves a skeleton in here, and I'm going to have to go back out of Peaceful again. There we go. If we spawn a skeleton, while we have the Elementium Sword, we'll actually have an increased chance of spawning pixies again, which is also uh, takes in consideration the, uh, the armor that you have. And the pixies that are spawned do considerably more damage. One thing to note as well, which goes with the Elementium Sword, is you don't actually have to have the armor pieces on to be given a chance to spawn a pixie. It will spawn pixies by itself. So you can see that... 
we get this guy to attack us. Let's go. There we go. We'll be spawning pixies. And they'll do slightly more damage with the sword equipped. Pretty cool. But, like I said, we can take all this off. And if we do another one... We still have a chance of spawning a pixie. It's just not going to be as much as if we have the uh, the armor equipped. There we go. We just had a pixie come out. Good stuff. Let's throw this back on because I think it's cool. All right. So next thing is some of the items that we have in the uh, in the Alpha Mancy update. Let's go back into this, and we don't want any bad guys spawning. There we go. Beautiful. We've got the extrapolated bucket, and how this works is any liquids. If you go and pick them up via the source block with the bucket, it's just going to basically delete them. So, uh, yeah, pretty funky stuff. Good idea. Good way to uh, clear up any excess liquid that you don't want. Or if there's a little lake or something you want to try and get rid of quick, you can go around with your bucket and you can pick it all up and uh, do that. But obviously, it doesn't actually hold the liquids, so you can't go place them back down. So once you pick the liquid up, it is gone. Next is the life aggregator and how this works is if we take the life aggregator we can move spawners But there is a small catch you can only move it once so let me go back into Regular let's pick up our monster spawner from here There we go. You can see that it's now inside here It says zombie in our life aggregator and if we take over here and place it again Our life aggregator is going to be destroyed. So they only do have a one-time use But very handy for moving around your spawners Cool beans. Next one is the Rod of Bifrost, and this is insanely cool. Very, very cool indeed. So the Rod of Bifrost will use mana, so let's grab ourselves a mana tablet like such, and let's get our Rod of Bifrost. What this does is it will make a kind of like a path, a uh, an awesome looking path. So if we go up and we do this and click, check that out. Oh yeah, we've got an awesome little walkway to go along. Pretty funky stuff, right? Now, these can span roughly around 100 blocks, so they can go on for a very, very long time, and they'll last presumably around about 15 seconds per piece. So if I go out of, uh, if I go into normal mode, and we try this again, you're going to note that the, uh, the actual item itself has a durability bar, and that will slowly fill up. So between this point, we can't actually place any more of these awesome rainbow roads. We can't. We have to wait for it to make its way back to full durability, and then we can place and do another one. Oof. How cool is that? That is awesome. Look at it keep going. <laughs> Love it. Cool beans. All right, let's move on. So the next thing are a few baubles and trinkets that have changed around. So we have a new one. We have the Glob Globetrotter's Sash. And how this guy works is if I go back into this and we grab us one of these guys, it's very much like the Sojourney's uh, Sash that allows us to run faster. But uh, this one basically just gives you a bit more speed. So if I throw this on, we're going to be considerably faster now than we was with the Sojourney's Sash. We can still do the basic things like run up one block uh, high areas so we can just go straight upstairs we can go over one block amounts of water and we have a small jump boost as well so good stuff next one is the great fairy ring and this one increases your chance of spawning fairies or pixies so again this meshes with the armors and the sword so if you have all of this and you have that one you've got an extremely high chance of spawning pixies which is cool but once again you don't need any of these other items to be given the chance to spawn a pixie with just the ring itself you do have a chance of spawning a pixie which is nice. Now let's go into some of the stuff that's been added that isn't really to do with the Elven update itself, but they're nice little additions which are pretty funky. So the book itself, the Lexica Britannia, has had a bit of an overhaul as far as user customizability goes. If we have a look inside now, you'll see that we have 10 customizable bookmarks. So if we go to Generating Floor, if we select one of these, we're going to have this area in the side which says Click to Add a Bookmark. So if we go into Pasture Seeds, and say we're on this page here, page 2 out of 4, we can click our bookmark, and it will add that into our bookmark. So now if we go back to our main page, and we click on pasture seeds, it will take us to that area like that. You can have 10 of these in total, and to remove them, you just shift and right click to remove your bookmarks. Good stuff. We now also have visual headers, so you can see the headers at the top have changed, so instead of just being kind of see-through, we actually have a little nice little green area there making it easier to see. And there has been added many utility controls, so it's kind of hard for me to show you these because uh, you can't see my... <laughs> 
<laughs> you, ca you can't see my keyboard, so I'll explain the differences. So now you can navigate with cursor keys, page up, page down, and mouse wheel. You can also, if you have a touchscreen monitor and you have it, your Minecraft touchscreen settings enabled, you can swipe your screen left and right, which will move the pages. Now that's pretty funky, right? You can also use backspace and right mouse to take you back, and you can use your home key, which will take you to the main index. So some nice user ability kind of add-ons there, just to make it a little bit nicer to use your book. Little things make a big difference. Next, we have some new textures. So ingots, armor, shears, and the soul scribe, including the redstone mana spreader, have all had a bit of a visual update just to make them look that little bit fancier. And we've got ourselves a new flower. So we've got the Dafo Mill. This flower here, once given a little bit of mana, will basically push items. So it's like a little windmill for you. So you throw an item, and it'll go ahead and it'll push him forward. It actually has a pretty decent range on it, this guy. It's not bad, but uh, that's how that guy works. Yes, now you can change the direction of it as well, so obviously it'll face the four directions. So if, uh, if we go ahead and we shift click with our wand of the forest, you can see that it's going to go ahead and change the direction. If I put it into night time, you'll be able to see kind of the particles coming up, showing which way it's going. We can go ahead and we can change that around into different directions, depending on which way you want your uh, items to be blown. There we go. Pretty good stuff. Next up is the Rod of the Seas. This guy is very funky indeed. It's made like this. We need a living wood, a water bottle, and a rune of water. And this works very much like the uh, Rod of the Land, in which instead of placing dirt, we place water blocks. Pretty nice, right? Nice little touch right there. Then there's been a small update to the floral fertilizer, in which you now have a plus one flower amount for every time you use it. So every time we uh, put down this guy to get us some flowers, we're going to get one additional flower than we would normally get. So that's nice. And then to finish up, we have the different types of uh, kind of vanity blocks. So we have the Dreamwood, which we originally got. We get Dreamwood slabs, Dreamwood stairs, Dreamwood planks. And we've got Dreamwood plank slab, Dreamwood plank stairs, Mossy Dreamwood. We have the Frame Dreamwood, Patterned Framed Dreamwood, and the Glimmering Dreamwood, which gives off a little bit of light as well. Cool stuff. There we go, guys. So that's pretty much that for the Alfame update. All of the Elven bits and bobs are extremely cool, I must admit. And there's a lot of stuff in there that's functionally very useful for your day-to-day uh, -day tasks. And another few bits that have been added that just make it a little bit nicer. So overall, a pretty awesome update. There we go. All right, guys. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you want to go ahead and download the mod, I will send you to Vasky's section in the description down below and there's also a link down there to Vasky's patron if you want to go ahead and donate and uh, be an awesome little patron there we go i'll see you guys soon have yourself a great day have a good one as always and goodbye